Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're back with another Ask GN video. This is our second episode. The first one was fairly well liked. You guys posted a lot of questions in the comments and we're going to address a few more of those today in this Ask GN video. Again, this is a pretty unscripted, straightforward Q&A with the comments that are received via Twitter, Facebook, or just YouTube comments for the channel. And we're going to go over a few of those today. So the previous video talked about a couple of things like the 4790K versus the 6700K for 3DS Max. We talked about DDR3L versus DDR3. And today we're starting with uh, Sonic, or Sonic, who says, I hope I see you at PAX. Our odds are low, though. Not really a question, but this does bring up something I wanted to point out for everyone. We will be at PAX this weekend. This video should be going live on a Monday or Tuesday. And we'll be at PAX the ensuing weekend. So that would be Friday through Sunday. We'll be there. We're covering the show. And there will be a lot of coverage on the website, GamersNexus.net. And, of course, a lot of video coverage as well. If you happen to see us there, if you're going to be present, don't hesitate to say hi to anyone in a Gamers Nexus shirt. There will be three of us working the show. And we might be in a rush, but we're certainly happy to talk with anyone who wants to come over and say hi. So, yes, we will be at PAX. And the first real question here, run for pixels says, please tell me the GTX 950 is possible with my 300 watt power consumption. <clears throat> and I think what run for pixels means here is pretty simply, will the GTX 950 work with a 300 watt power supply? And that really depends on a lot of things. It depends on the other hardware. As always, I have hair in my face. Uh, so. The 950 we just reviewed in video and written form, and it is one of the lowest power consuming cards of its output in terms of frame rate, graphics fidelity that we've tested yet. So it's got a 90 watt TDP. In testing, I found that with a 4790K, 32 gig of RAM, and a couple of SSDs, which is our test bench for every GPU in a single GPU configuration, we found that that configuration consumes about 200 watts of power. I think it was 199 or 201, somewhere in there. Uh, with the 960, you go up a little bit towards 216, 220, somewhere in that range. But with the 950, you're around or under 200 watts with a 4790K at stock and 32 gigabytes of RAM at, I think it was a uh, 1.5 volt kit, maybe 1.65 though. Either way, pretty powerful hardware and under 300 watts. The thing with power supplies is they are fairly complicated. I know it's a thing that I think a lot of builders will sort of just pick one that has good reviews on Newegg and add it to the cart, but there's certainly a lot more to them than that. We just published an article on Voltage Ripple for one example of how power supplies can be complex at the base level. And when it comes to power supplies, the core item is efficiency and not just wattage. So what you're looking at is how efficient does the power supply fuel the amount of power demanded by the system? How efficient is that process? And generally, most power supplies do best when they're sitting at 60 to 80% power consumption, depending on the manufacturer, the supplier, and the spec. So the ATX spec is the most common one for the types of systems that we're all building. And you'll want to look at the power supply manufacturer's website to determine where their PSU performs best. But if you're assuming the average 60% load, you probably want a little bit more than 300 watts for peak efficiency, meaning when the CPU and GPU are under 100% load, you want a little bit of headroom for allowing fluctuations, for allowing loss through heat, efficiency loss, and that would put you in the 350 range. In general, you can definitely run a GTX 950 with a 300 watt power supply if it's efficient, if it has good components, and of course, depending on your other components in the system. So if you're running something like an FX 9000 series chip, which is a 220 watt TDP, then the answer would be no. You would need something more powerful than 200, uh, 300 watts. You would need something closer to 500 to allow for that efficiency window. But if you're running an Intel processor or the modern AMD APUs, anything really in the less than 100 watt range for TDP on the CPU, then you will be able to get by on a 300 watt power supply. Hopefully that answers that question. And if you have more questions about power supplies, check out the website. We actually have a whole dictionary that talks about power supply specs. We talk about voltage ripple, 
efficiency, 80 plus certifications. So check GamersNexus.net for that info. Moving on, Sean Wright asks, how long do you think the 980 Ti will remain the fastest asterisk single GPU card and defines the asterisk as ignoring Titan X? So this is a good question. Uh, first of all, Sean here makes the distinction single GPU card. So that's pretty important because that means that the video card has one GPU on it, in this case the GM200. So we're ruling out things like the 295X2 and any potential dual GPU cards that NVIDIA may or may not make in the future. So looking at single GPU solutions then, at the high end it's the sort of the 980 Ti and the Fury X in the gaming range, and then you've got Titans, of course, we're ignoring the Titan X here per the question, and you've got AMD's Fire Pro series. And the Fire Pro series is really not within gaming range, just like the Quadro series is not within gaming range. So we're going to rule those out and look strictly at the gaming marketed cards, ignoring the Titan X, which is oddly a gaming marketed card, despite the Titan's legacy. So the 980 Ti is, I would agree with the premise that it is among the fastest single GPU solutions on market right now, depending on what you're testing. Certainly is the fastest in a lot of tests that we've conducted depending on the version of the 980 Ti, the manufacturer, how long will it remain the fastest or one of the fastest? At this point, we don't have any good data that there will be GPU launches before Pascal or before AMD's Arctic Isles series. So until that point, I would suspect that the 980 Ti will remain at the top of its class. I would certainly expect some sort of high-end launch from one of the two manufacturers at some point in the near future, even if it's just a refresh or it's a dual GPU launch or whatever. I, I'm not being coy here. We really just don't have any information right now. So I would expect something at some point. It might be a Titan because Titan is due for another update in the future. That may be a dual precision Titan though. But the, the short answer really is that I have no good information on this question. It's not me being under embargo or NDA. We just don't have an answer. And I would imagine that you won't see massive gains until the new architectures from AMD and NVIDIA are both out. And that would be Arctic Isles and Pascal, both of which I would predict to be available. Pascal we know to be available sometime within the next year or so. NVIDIA has given us a couple of time frames for Pascal. We've published all of them. We've seen 2016 through 2018 as one of them, so that would put it coming out next year. Whether or not that's a gaming skew, I really don't know. It will be a die shrink though, and the AMD Arctic Isles one should also be a die shrink. They're both moving to HBM2 in theory, and that should be much faster than HBM1, which is already really impressively fast, and it'll be more capacity, eight to 16 gigabytes in the uh, likely range there. So that's when I would expect the biggest shift. Moving on. Lethality from Twitter asked, Hey guys, curious your take on the disparity of AMD versus NVIDIA in the real world DX12 benchmarks coming out. So this is something that is certainly worth addressing. We are going to pack soon, so I'm not going to have time to run DX12 benchmarks right now, but there's more than that to it. I'm waiting for us to have more to work with for DX12. So that is an important item of note here as I walk into this. So the disparity between AMD and NVIDIA, there have been a lot of benchmarks run lately, and for those who may have seen them, I'll, I'll just shout PC Perspective was among the first group to publish a few. There have been some German ones that have gone online, uh, gone online, excuse me. And the disparity that's being discussed here is that AMD has seen a larger gain in general from DX11 to DX12 performance. NVIDIA has seen a pretty small gain from DX11 to DX12 performance, moving between the APIs. So why is that happening? Well, it's it's a little bit uh, simplified right now. There's only one game that's really even a testable title. It's Ashes of Singularity or something like that. That is the only game that is presently using DX12 in any capacity, any official capacity. That game is an alpha. That game is made by Stardock, who are at least have some partnership with AMD and have worked with Mantle in the past. And it's just, it's one game. So all games will perform differently. The DX12 feature levels are going to be tapped into differently for different games. So this is not a benchmark that is indicative of platform-wide, GPU hardware level-wide, or software level-wide performance for DirectX 12. It is a benchmark of 
Ashes of Singularity using DX12 with the current hardware, but it's not the best indicator of overall performance until we really get more games that are coming out in a real world scenario using DX12 other than the 3 d Mark API overhead test, which is a great test, but it's not meant for comparing GPUs. Even 3 d Mark says that pretty directly on their page. So what is our take on it? What is my take on it? I would say that uh, I, I'm personally waiting for more software to be available in the real world application area to actually test the X12. And I think also worth noting is that Nvidia has very seriously invested in optimizing for DirectX 11 in the past and in the immediate future. And to this end, we'll see smaller gains for Nvidia from DX11 to 12 because they've invested so much in DX11 that they're really hitting the cap of what it's capable of already. AMD has struggled quite a bit for their driver launches in recent past. In the last few months, last three months in particular, they really have stepped up their game for driver launches, so definitely a good thing in that regard. It's not nearly as bad as it was a couple of, uh, back in December was their first major launch in quite a while, and then it was silent for 180 days. So they've gotten better but they have never been particularly good with DirectX 11 performance. So that means we're seeing bigger gains from AMD from DX11 to DX12. One interesting note is that the jump for AMD from DX11 to 12 is putting them close to parity with Nvidia, either a few FPS above, few FPS below. Either way, the 390X is close to parity with the 980 and the benchmarks that we've seen and the internal ones we've conducted and haven't published. So. That is certainly promising for those who want a more competitive video card market, and it's just not it's not the full picture. So I would say, kind of hang back for a moment. Don't just jump on the AMD is going to crush Nvidia or Nvidia is going to crush AMD boat just yet, because it's not clear. We need more games. We need more of the. Uh, complete picture before we can really start tearing into DX12 and how it will impact the GPU marketplace. A couple more here. Peter Gratineau says, Hi Steve, when are you going to test the Zotac 980Ti Amp Extreme? We've heard a lot about this card, heard that it's a pretty good overclocker. Here's the thing, <laughs> we published a review a little while ago about the uh, GTX 980 Extreme, I think it was, the original 980 Extreme, not the Ti version from Zotac, and at that time, we were very firm in our statement not to buy that video card because it had some very serious overvolting and overclocking issues. And I've, I've heard from various readers that those issues have been resolved. I've heard from others that they still exist. And unfortunately, we can't validate that either way because we don't have the 980 Extreme anymore to validate. It was sent back. And I have not received any test hardware from Zotac since that point. So when will we get the Zotac 980 Ti Amp Extreme? I would not bet on it unless I can get a friend who will buy it and then borrow that for a few days and benchmark it. I would not bet on us getting one of those in the immediate future. I will certainly try and see if Zotac would be interested in sending us a review sample, but based on our last review of the 980 Extreme, it's it's just not, a, not an easy thing to get right now. And then, uh, Finally, Grand Ratio says two days ago, you look like a girl. So I'm not really sure how to respond to that comment, but uh, thank you, I suppose. That is all for this Ask a GN video. Please leave your comments below if you have any questions for the next video. And again, we're at PAX, so come say hi. And if you like the kind of content we produce, check out our Patreon page. It's in the post roll video. We've now gone up to nine backers on Patreon. So again, slow growth, but extremely helpful because it does help us keep producing this content, move away from traditional advertising, things like that. And of course, I've got Keegan working on the video and video editing aspect of this. So it's, it's a, a growing team at this point. And the support certainly helps cover all the bases. So that's all for this one. I will see you all next time.